to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. It's Power Talk Friday. Before I start the show today, I wanted to let you know that you are invited to join me and Kravit Inc. for a behind-the-scenes look at Barry Lance's new fabric collection, Canvas to Cloth. We are going to hear from Barry himself on his artistic process and how he has turned his one-of-a-kind paintings into luxuriously approachable fabrics. Tune in for this exclusive conversation on May 4th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And for the link to RSVP, please go to my show notes or the event page on my website. All right, so today for Power Talk Friday, we have Michael Schneider with us. Michael is the founder and CEO of Next Events. Next Events facilitates one-on-one meetings, connecting sellers and buyers in the interior design space. And that means connecting vendors to you, designers, right? Michael Schneider is a hospitality industry relationship builder and business leader. He founded the Boutique Design brand, which includes BDNY, the Hospitality Interior Design Trade Show. Now having sold the Boutique Design concept, Michael is looking forward to reinventing and transforming the interior design industry all over again. He's here to share his new concept. He's still playing matchmaker for designers and suppliers, but this time he's ditched the traditional trade show format for something more modern and accessible. Let's get to it so Michael can explain exactly how you can learn more about the latest products right from your living room. Hi, Michael. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hi, Luann. Thanks for having me. So, Michael, you are a gentleman who has spent much of his career in the hospitality industry. And um, we all know all of all of our designers that are listening that are in the residential industry have much compassion for our friends in the hospitality design sector. We just had uh, Stacy Garcia on the show recently, and she described, you know, how real COVID impacted her business and how important it was for her to rethink her business and pivot it, which is not so easy with a well-established business like hers. But, you know, Stacy Garcia, she's a fighter, man. You're not taking her down. <laughs> so, um, so she talked to us a little bit about that. But you have some experience in this as well, and you have had some challenges, but you also have had some successes and some aha moments in this last year. Tell us a little bit about um, wh- where you were, what you're doing, and how. What you know, basically, what did COVID teach you, Michael? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, So I'm the original founding publisher of Boutique Design Magazine, and I also started Boutique Design New York, commonly known as BDMY. So those were my babies. That's how I got my name in the industry. And uh, I started that with my father quite a while ago. I I think uh, BDMY was supposed to go into its 11th or 12th year. Mm. And um, I stayed, I sold the company back in 2008. After that financial crisis we had, uh, my father kind of gave me the choice to buy him out, shut it down or sell it. Um, So I took the the latter choice to sell it and I sold it to a company called ST Media in Cincinnati, it was a privately held family owned company for about a hundred, around for a hundred years. 10 years later, they sold that company for over 40 million. So they, they made a great bet on, a, on an idea. Yeah. So uh, at that time, BDNY was just an idea. We actually postponed it. We didn't launch it the year they, they bought it. I said, we need more time to launch this. It's, it's not, it's not the, not the right time to do it. So, um, 
anyways, uh, fast forward, they sold that company uh, the end of 2019 uh, before COVID hit. And it's great that they got out when they did. And, mm. uh, you know, he wishes he probably he likes to think he had a crystal ball, but it's just timing, you know. Mm. Um, and I started a company uh, the beginning of 2020 and we were slated to launch a cruise, a hospitality cruise do some matchmaking, this sort of speed dating concept. First time on a cruise in our industry, the week of March 12th, we were we had 150 people that were supposed to go out of a Royal Caribbean cruise out of Fort Lauderdale going to Cozumel, Mexico. Well, if you remember what was going on at that time, <laughs> that was probably the worst possible time to have a cruise. The State Department issued a no cruise order. You had that Princess Cruise out in San Francisco, that was just contracting COVID like crazy. And mm. we had, we were losing people like flies. So, um, in that moment I figured, well, what am I going to do? I got to do something and traveling and meeting people face to face, was just not going to happen in, then. And, uh, we decided to pivot and launch next virtual meetings. It did take me a couple months to get it off the ground. That being in March, I think I started in May of 2020. And it took off immediately. Uh, it was just such an easy solution for everybody uh, to jump on a 30-minute Zoom call and conduct the meetings that they used to do in person over Zoom. It was a little awkward at first. Um, but I, you asked me what I learned from COVID, and I think a lot of people learned that you have to be nimble. You have to be willing to pivot and figure out where the opportunities are because they, they're there. And people are looking for viable solutions to conduct business. Um, and that's that's the biggest thing I learned is just is uh, to to kind of figure out where you can make a buck. It may not be as much as it was before, but there there are opportunities there. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting to me is that when I think back to March, when the world you know shifted on its axis, um, that you launched the next virtual meetings by May uh, because. I think in by, you know, we, I don't think any of us really thought that this was, you know, I remember when we got closed down for two weeks and I was like in New Jersey and I was like two weeks, like two, like, how are we going to eat? Like, I don't cook anymore. I'm not doing this cooking thing. Like what we got to go to restaurants. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, and then when two weeks became another month and then another month and it still was not like, this is going to be here. I don't think it was until august july that it was oh this is this is going to be here for a while and so looking back interestingly i remember sarah danielli who was the ceo of my doma studio we did the same as you we literally looked at each other and said okay we can't go to high point what are we going to do let's do a virtual thing blah 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 and we literally rolled out 19 hours in i think we had it out in april but we didn't roll it out as a business model. We rolled it out as an event. And what I'm hearing is that you pivoted and rolled out a business model. So did you really just somewhere in your business experience think, okay, everybody, you think this is two or three weeks. I know this is going to be six months to a year. Yeah, I, I can't say I really had uh, knowledge to think that this is going to last longer than, than you know, what you were projecting or everybody else was projecting. I just knew I was dead in the water mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't execute on this event. So I needed to do something for income immediately. And I figured I'm, I'm a little bit of an all or nothing person, um, serial entrepreneur. So when I commit to an idea, I commit all the way. And I would, I didn't launch this thing thinking it would just be something to tie me over until we get back to a, a meeting face to face. Right. I launched this with the intention of it being, an actual viable business. Um, and it paid off because it is. And I think even when we get on the other side of COVID, whatever that looks like, I'm not so sure we're going to go back to the same ways of conducting business. Everybody is looking forward to getting back to face-to-face -face meetings, including myself, but it's going to be sprinkled in with some of this hybrid virtual stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. So it, it, this business is still going to be um, valuable. Interesting. No, so I think that that's what I was saying. There's a compliment in there for you that it was, okay, here's what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to do it for a minute or for a month or two. I'm going to figure out how to make this a viable business. And I'm going to, you know, really 
do it. Like you said, you jump all in. So let's talk about next virtual meetings. What are they and why do interior designers care about them? I mean, here you are, you're on an interior design uh, podcast where we talk to in, uh, business owners that, of interior design firms. So what happens at these meetings? Why do they want to know about it? Tell us all about it. Yeah, sure. So next virtual meetings are 30 minute Zoom meetings where we put together buyers and suppliers of interior furnishings for hospitality projects originally, but now we have opened up to any types of projects and the residential sector has been so busy. Um, I think what the value we really bring to the table is a lot of these sources that we have on there and some are the household names uh, like Delta or Lixel plumbing fixtures you might have heard of. Um, but there's a lot of great sources there uh, that were, you know, they have tremendous resources to bring great pricing and manufacturing to the table. Custom manufacturers, um, people that stock inventory, they have the capabilities and they're all looking for projects. It doesn't matter what type they are and they're hungry for the business. So it's a great source for your residential designers um, to to uh, conduct business with some new, new resources. Uh, on top of that, I think, we're compensating designers to do these meetings. Um, so we're paying them for their valuable time to consider these new resources. We pay $50 per 30 minute Zoom meeting. And I was a little, I had a little trepidation about launching that idea because it was initially met with, met with well, I, you know, this is something that I'm supposed to do anyway with my job, but that's kind of changed because some people have had their jobs cut back. A lot of people were working from home um, so it's a great opportunity as it could be considered like a little bit of a side hustle. Um, mm. and the level of engagement is off the charts. It's, that's one of the best, uh, feedback I get. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the compensation. I don't know if it's because of the sourcing, but it's worked extremely well for the participants. I think they like the level of professionalism, the fact that we're scheduling the meetings. They don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the back and forth of that. We take care of all of it and that gets annoying. So it cuts down a little bit on that fatigue. Um, and uh, I think it's just a, a, a great engaging experience for everybody to be a part of it. And um, if the designer can't be compensated for this for some reason, they can also donate to a charity of their choice. And about 10% of our buying audience does do that. Okay. And so when a designer comes to this thir this ne this 30 minute Zoom meeting, um what is the premise that maybe one one month it's Delta faucets and there's a representative from Delta there doing a is it a 30 minute presentation that they just watch and they go away or is it a conversation asking questions? Is it facilitated and led? What's the the format of the 30 minutes, Michael? Yeah, it's all of the above, but we do do some coaching also. That was the one thing I would I would also say is a benefit because I know that a PowerPoint presentation for 30 minutes on Zoom is not going to be very engaging. So we do offer some coaching to our some of our uh, suppliers, and they would also say that's a benefit. They ask us what what are what presentations work well, and we've witnessed hundreds of them. And in our experience, the ones that are the most engaging are factory tours or giving people some insight into how they make the product, what their process is. Uh, one of my favorite uh, customers is Philips Collection, and they sell to residential. Uh, I think their, their tagline is every piece is a conversation. And mm -hmm. they sell all kinds of products, beautiful products, amazing sources from Southeast Asia and different places like that. Uh, and they do this amazing factory tour. It's a family owned company, it's father, son, daughter, um, and they all get in on the act and they mm. do a great job. It's polished, it's fun. You know, uh, Jason comes on and he goes through some pretty pictures and then he turns it over to his dad who rides, rides around in their, um, their warehouse on a, on a Segway <laughs> following him. You know, it's a dog and pony show a little bit. And that's the great thing about it is you can do that kind of thing. Um, whereas before, maybe you didn't necessarily want to go on a factory tour, but it's almost like, let me, let me make some popcorn and sit back and watch <laughs> this thing. And, and you're getting paid to do it. Right, so. right. And the idea of it is, is to expose interior designers to brands and, and vendors and trades and resources that maybe they would never have the opportunity to meet the principles of the firm, for example, like that particular example you met, you mentioned, or to see the factory. It's to 
open their eyes up and give them more access to things they might not have thought of. But then also for the brands, it's reaching the designers that they never cross path with either, right? That's right. Yeah. And, and, you know, before we did this at events, Speedy and Y is a perfect example. I mean, people, you, you'd be lucky to have two minutes with someone. They scan your badge and you're on your way. And then afterwards, you don't even necessarily remember what you saw. But in this type of engagement, your, your undivided attention for 30 minutes, you get some real insights with multiple people from the company. In the case of Philips Collection, the owners are people that are vested in their product. And um, it's a very en- enriching experience. Mm. Uh, How yeah. often are the meetings run? We do them every Wednesday from nine to five. I was doing them twice a week from eight to six. It was literally killing me. Wow. Uh, so I scaled them back and uh, now we just book them weeks out, you know. Um, so um, is it like, what is it like every hour on the hour is another half hour presentation? Like from not like I don't get it because they're 30 minutes. So how many are you doing between nine and five? Oh, they're pretty much packed. It's back to back for the for the designer or the supplier. That's up to them. I can book them back to back or we spread them out. Um, sometimes the sometimes the supplier likes to do them all in a row. Sometimes they like to space them out. So it's it's it based on their availability and their schedule. So, for instance, if I come to a particular Wednesday, it's not like it's eight hours of no. of Delta Fawcett, and I just pick which half hour I want to show. It's it could be eight hours. It could be sixteen different presentations, or it could be Delta Fawcett's or um, Phillips or whoever is presenting three of those times. Yeah, it, it, basically, there's some back and forth. There's some scheduling. We do. We take care of all that. It's it's white glove service. You know, we we we. You don't have to worry about that. You just tell us your availability, and then we link you up. We keep it simple. It's really we send out a meeting request. Once we have the available time, there's a Zoom link. It's always the same link and password. You come in and. That's that. You know, we, we can do we can also do we can record the Zoom. We can transcribe it. That's another benefit is, you know, for note taking, you don't have to worry about any of it. We can send you the transcription. Um, so we, we, we can do all that stuff. Uh, we help with follow ups afterwards. We connect everybody in the email. So you have your contact information, whatever, whatever you need. We, we go above and beyond. We're a meeting facilitator, matchmaker. That's what we do. Okay. So, but where is, don't mind me getting all the way in the specifics. This is how my brain clicks. So, but what I'm, what I'm missing is if I'm a designer, do I have to be invited to do this or I can just go to the website for, I don't know, nextvirtualmeetings.com and find out about it? Like how, how does it work? And when I, once I find out, what's the process? Yeah, so we're lo- we're looking for more in- residential interior designers for sure. Uh, you just go to the website nextvirtualmeetings.com and you sign up. There's an application there. You can literally pick the days and times that you're available in the application. You can pick some of the suppliers that you wish to meet with right away, and then we will. Uh, and that's a great way to get started is actually pick some suppliers that you're interested in, and then we reach out to those suppliers and we ask if there's interest in meeting meeting the buyers. Um, that that's really it. I mean, as long as you have a project that is, is in need of of products, whether it's lighting or furniture or whatnot, we you you qualify. Okay, so there's a distinction there. So you're looking for designers, not necessarily a designer that doesn't have any pipeline. Is just thinking, I'll spend a half hour and get fifty bucks and have my popcorn, right? You're looking for designers that so maybe I'm running a pro, I'm running a firm, and you know it's. April 2021 and I know I signed a contract and this fall I'm going to need you know I'm building a two million dollar home and I'm going to need appliances lighting and whatever so I could go to your website I could go on there and I could say I'm interested can I do generically lighting and in which case maybe you're going to connect me with lighting I didn't ever think of before or I can ask specifically I've always wanted to my mind I might be thinking I've always wanted to know more detail about I don't know you know I don't know I pick somebody and then you'll say hey their seminar is happening on Tuesday July 2nd at two o'clock yeah so it's all of the above they can just check lighting and leave it to us they can pick the lighting manufacturers that are part of our program whenever someone does a meeting in our program as a supplier we automatically put them on the list of suppliers um 
and we we go to them with the opportunity and then what i love is new new suggestions so i think that's what you hinted on mm. is when a designer comes to us and says i'm looking for lighting i've always wanted to meet with xyz company now that's a lead for me i love leads and i can go to that xyz company and it gives me a reason to to talk to them you know i i have uh sally joe she has a 2 million dollar how she's building, she needs a custom lighting fixture for the foyer, you know, her budget's 50,000. They're gonna take that meeting, you know? Right. Um, so Interesting. we're pretty flexible, pretty flexible with how we can engage with making the best use of a buyer's time. Okay, interesting, interesting. And so some of the brands that you're already associated with is I see Seasonal Living, Travera, um, Wingets, um, Artline Group. These are companies that you are, are some of the suppliers that come and run these meetings. Phillips Collection, as you mentioned, Recollect 2, right? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. And so, all right. And so what happens? So I come to this meeting, I make my appointment, you know, you mail me 50 bucks and you send me a recording. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, no, we do digital payments. Everybody wants to get paid instantly, right? There's nothing worse than doing a meeting for 50 bucks. It's not going to make or break you. I mean, that's great. It's a base $100 an hour. It's not nice. not jump, jump change if you do a bunch of meetings. But um, yeah, we do digital payments. And uh, well, I mean, we always, I think it's, I do find that the, the buyers that participate in these meetings are appreciative of the opportunity they generally are, um, you know, they're, they're great in responding to our customers, which didn't always happen before this, by the way, um, when we did events. It was one of the chief complaints of some of the sponsors or suppliers is that they never heard back from the people they met with. And I, I do believe, and I've gotten plenty of feedback that this through this platform, people have been more open to follow up. And uh, so we always ask the buyers to be open to that. Interesting. And you know what's funny is I I don't I'm I'm glad that you pay the designers but I'm I'm so curious that it's necessary. I mean it seems like there's as much in it for the designer to come to this meeting as it is for the supplier to be at the meeting. You know what I mean? To get that information on the product and the the selling points of the product because you know if I'm selling to a luxury consumer, I'm thinking of Monogram Appliances for example, one of the sponsors of the show, and they have their new pro range that's just coming out this April and it may be out by the time the show airs but it's very important as an interior designer to understand the actual true features and benefits of an appliance that commands that sort of price tag because if I understand it more than oh isn't that pretty this thing is amazing it's a Rolls Royce of, of appliances I need more than that to convince or not even to convince to convey the value of that range to that prospective consumer so that they will plunk that money down and so I, I find it interesting that um, it's a pay model because I think there's as much in it for the designer to be at the meeting you know what sure. I'm saying sure yeah, well, I, and I thought about that, but I wanted to get it off the ground quickly. And I know a lot of people were reeling back in, well, some people were reeling back when COVID first hit. So I just wanted to make it all kind of work and pay people for their time. Okay. Uh, I, do, I do have some competitors that, that don't pay the designers, but they're, they're less engaged, you know? I mean, I think at the end of the day, if you're getting paid for something, you, you, you may have a slightly different attitude during that meeting. Because people are doing this on their own anyway. I mean, a lot of manufacturers are trying to get appointments with designers and doing Zooms, um, and they're sending them gifts. This is, is, especially in the hospitality industry, it's very commonplace. I don't know how it is in residential, but hospitality is, is like a huge gifting community, whether it's sending bottles of wine or chocolates or cupcakes. So there is some kind of remuneration anyway. There's mm -hmm. some compensation. Um, but I always was a big fan of giving people cold, hard cash because they can buy, they can pay for whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I hear you. I, you know, it's funny because um, that is so typical. You're right that you will get the box in the mail with the, the you know, the, the, I don't know, the thingies in it, right? <laughs> and it's funny because so often those gift boxes, when you do get them, Clearly, at least fifty dollars has spent on the boxes and you know in the enclosures in the boxes, let alone the shipping to the boxes. So you're the level of practicality, like here's the fifty dollars. Why don't you do with what you want, right? 
Right. And we're a third party. So it's not as much pressure on the men on the supplier participating to deal with any of that stuff. And there's no guilt trip associated with it. They, the suppliers know we pay the designers and the designers know that the suppliers know. Um, but they don't have to worry about following up with some lavish gift. Everybody is even playing field. Level yeah. Playing. Pretty so interesting. It, takes, it just takes that off the table. Like there's no pressure. And, you know, it's there's you know, it's so funny because I often say to my team, you know, there's sometimes I wish that we talk to accountants because when you go to do something for an event, it's sort of like, OK, these guys are designers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it has to be really nice because they do really nice things. I mean, the thank you cards I get and the the boxes and the and the little things and the way they're wrapped. I mean, it's the community is so cre- obviously individually so creative and even in the gift giving it becomes creative and so you're right just here here's fifty dollars <laughs> here's fifty dollars keep it simple <laughs> buy whatever you want exactly oh that's so funny all right and so so every Wednesday this happens and we can go on your website nextmeetings.com and would a designer be considered a buyer on your website so when I'm looking at it says sellers, buyers, facts, testimonials. So a designer is a buyer, right? Correct. Yeah. And it's next virtual meetings.com. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you also do, um, y- you, you're, you're expecting in 2021, I had to think for a second what year we were in, um, to do some in-person events. Am I right about that, Michael? Yeah. So now this cruise that we were supposed to do is now going to be a land cruise. Um, we're slated to do it October uh, 7 to 10 in at the Sweet Grass Inn, which is down in uh, South Carolina, Isle Palm, Palm South, South Carolina. They just opened in April. They're opening in April. Wow. Um, yeah. So that we're hoping to get back to the face to face and, and doing it, you know, as safely as possible. And uh, we are looking for applicants to come to that event. Uh, so that could definitely apply to your, your audience listening to this podcast. And that's a hosted buyers program. So you're not paid for that, but we pay for all the expenses, the three night hotel, all the food and beverage, round trip transportation, however you decide to get there. And you would apply on our website for that event, which is allaboarddesign.co, allaboarddesign.co. Wow. Um, and if you're selected, we you would do the same thing in person. Um, in person, there are 20-minute meetings rather than 30 because you don't need as much time mm. <laughs> when you're in person. Isn't that interesting? And people are talking about how everything's taking longer when you have to do it virtually, which I've there is something to that. Uh-huh. Um in person, you just you pick up so many more mannerisms and just goes faster. Oh, interesting, um, right? Yeah. So they're twenty minute meetings. They're they're happening at a tabletop. It's a limited amount of product. It's not meant to be a trade show, and it's sort of like speed dating. I think pe- most people are used to these types of events now. Um, they're pretty popular, you know, versus a trade show where you build a, a booth or whatnot. Um, so yeah, we're looking for applicants. Tell Definitely. me that website again. All aboard. Yeah, it's allaborddesign.co. Okay, because um, yeah. .com brings you up to something completely different. <laughs> right, yeah. 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 Okay. I try, and that's that's one of the ways you can get around the .com is you just you go with the company, .co. There's so many web endings now. Okay. And so, um, I mean, from a practical standpoint, are you – 100% certain as we're in the spring of 2021 that you will be able to do this in October or is it the time? I mean, I, I mean, here's the practical questions that go through my mind now. Is it something where people are required to show that they've been vaccinated in order to attend or like, how are you managing that? Because it's still not a hard and firm protocol for the world at this point. Yeah, you have to be fluid in a COVID environment. There, no, I'm not 100% certain. Uh, I just, you know, we were originally going to do this event in April, and that was rescheduled from previous times. This is like the third or fourth time we rescheduled this event. So, um, I think that answers your question. But um, as far as protocol, we were for a- April when we were planning on doing it next month. Uh, we were looking into having on-site testing. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So we were, we were going to have on-site testing. We were we were going to ask people to get a test prior to travel and then do an on-site test as well. Okay. Um, 
Now, rapid testing, as you know, is not 100%, but if you test before you travel and then test again when you're there, you're, you're mitigating a lot of risk. But mm -hmm. the general consensus, the feedback we got, and there were people that wanted to go. But as you know, there are people that oh, yeah. will just travel no matter what. That's but right. The general consensus was the vaccine rollout was too slow for April. Um, and that seems to be spot on. I mean, here in New York, I can't even get it uh, until May because mm -hmm. um, I'm not in that one of those high risk categories. So October, people felt more comfortable. It seems like most of the events are being wedged into fourth quarter this year. Mm -hmm. It seems like everybody is trying to do an event in fourth quarter. I don't know if that is, uh, you know, a reason to expect that we'll be able to pull it off or not. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a lot of wishful thinking going on, so maybe that go. will help affect it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of this is per perception and, and comfort, yep. you know, risk, risk assessment. Comfort, yeah. perception, all that stuff plays in. And people who get vaccinated certainly feel more comfortable traveling. So, And is this going to be limited to a number of designers that will attend this event, That's in, this in-person event that we're talking about in South Carolina? Yes, it's generally one-to-one. -one. So the cruise, we had nearly 50 suppliers. Um, you know, I say this is probably going to be half that. Um, some suppliers have taken me up on uh, the offer of converting their credits to virtual meetings through our platform. Um, and, uh, you know, so I sitting here right now, I would say it's, you know, the event will be between 50 and 100 people. So it's very small. Mm -hmm. And when you say that it's over three nights, I guess two days and three nights or however that works, three nights, I don't know what, how that works. Um, and it's 20 minute meetings. Is that what I get up and do if I'm a designer? I expect to come and, you know, the agenda is 20 minute meetings with these 25 some odd brands. And I just the meetings are in person instead of via Zoom. And then what? There's nighttime dinners together or is nights and meals on your own? Like, how are you working all that? Yeah, it's generally the program is generally uh, two, two days, uh, it's three nights, two days. Uh, so we have a welcome reception the first night and then the main days are when we do the meetings uh, and it wouldn't be more than 20 meetings. Even if we have more than 20 suppliers, you're not going to meet with all of them in a sit down 20 minute meeting. Uh, there's some matchmaking intelligence that goes in behind it. I mean, if you're a designer and you have no interest in lighting for any of your projects, we're not going to set you up with a meeting with lighting, a lighting company. Mm -hmm. So we want to make it the best value for everybody that participates. But, uh, I, you know, we're of, we're of the mindset now that, when you go to these destinations, if you work the whole time and you don't have any time to enjoy yourself, you're not going to be, you're going to be le leaving feeling like you need a vacation. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're of a different mindset now since I started this company to make it a work play uh, experience. You know, welcome guests, whether it be significant others or family to mm. enjoy yourself. So we don't want to tax people with a grueling schedule we want them to actually enjoy themselves. Um, so we're looking at ways we'll probably shorten or summarize the actual business part of that. Um, but make sure that the suppliers still get the value that they're looking for. Okay. But so, there are meals and activities included in that, of course, Wh whatever we do, whatever we're permitted to do. Uh, okay. There's a lot of outdoor space at this property, which mm. is one of the reasons we picked it. Nice, 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 nice. So it's, um, it literally is, speed dating as you've mentioned a couple of times and it's an opportunity for an interior designer to really dramatically increase the resources that they have at their fingertips and also to make um an actual connection to a human person at that resource are these events the brands that are there the resources that are there are they by and by going to be the national sales managers or are they going to be the owners of the firms or that's all individual compared to what type of uh, firm the brand is? Yeah. I mean, it's generally, uh, you know, the owner or national sales manager or a regional sales rep. It depends on the size of the company. Mm, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. And then how about um, if that we've got suppliers that are listening, is there criteria for being considered one of the suppliers for this event? Uh, well, previously it was hospitality only, but we've opened that up to any type of um, uh, supplier. Uh, generally, we work with commercial projects, but again, it's I think things are so flexible and fluid now 
that if you're a supplier or a designer, you're willing to consider any project. Um, so there are no criteria other than just paying, paying the price and showing up. Mm -hmm. And that is the point that it's the suppliers that are paying the big bucks and, and, okay. (laughs) But we are, we are, we're significantly less expensive than our competing, the competing companies that are doing this. Okay. Uh, because because we're, although I'm not the new kid on the block, the company is a new kid on the block, and I wanted that was one of the biggest complaints uh, with the companies I worked for previously is that the these events were too expensive, mm-hmm. and it was hard to ascertain the ROI. So it, it's you want to make sure it's a price point of entry that's reasonable enough for people. Okay. Um, I love it. And um, are there any categories that it's not a good fit for? So it's a good fit for lighting companies, plumbing fixtures. Uh, it's a good fit for, I don't know, flooring companies. It's a good fit. Is it not a good fit for technology companies? Is it not a good fit for any category or is it really product, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a, I, would, I would focus on interior furnishings, FF&E. Um, okay. we're, we, we don't really play in the uh, technology, uh, logistics, electronics, or back of the house or anything like that. It's all decorative in nature. What you would, you know, whether it's uh, bedspreads or drapery or furniture or lighting, um, that's kind of the space that we play in. Right. Uh, there, there's a lot of stuff on the fringe. Uh, designers don't necessarily specify or purchase, like it could be toiletries or scent machines. Um, but they're getting more involved in that now because uh, they used to be not so important, but now they're becoming more and more important. So you, you get that those gray area items uh, like air filtration, air filters is so important, you know, and nobody wants an ugly air filter. They want something sexy and sleek. So normally I would say that's not a good candidate, but if it's really designed well, mm. um, you know, that's that area that could play in this space. Okay, interesting. No, and I can see that because if uh, a designer has a need, like you said, you know, a well-appointed home and there's a need for the air filters, you know, mechanism, whatever it is, and the client wants it and you want to put it there, you don't want it to be ugly. <laughs> so you want to yeah. know who's got the cutting edge, right? Who's got the great one, right? That's right. Yes, very interesting. I think it's awesome. I mean, it's so, so designers have a, lot, a couple of opportunities to work with you. They can go to um, nextmeetings.com and apply and you know, start to take part um, in your monthly virtual meetings where they can meet new suppliers that way, or they can apply for this other, you know, allaborddesign.co, where they might be one of the designers that qualify to be invited to this in-person meeting in October. And that's banking right up on High Point there. So somebody travels all the way to South Carolina, they can just, you know, um, scooch down to North Carolina because High Point starts, I think, I want to say the 10th or the something like that the 9th or the 10th yes yeah so interesting convenient i guess if you're on the road yeah 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 and if you can be away for that long right so but the, very cool very cool anything mike that we missed michael that we missed that we should cover before we you know go here uh i think that we covered everything i want to thank you for the opportunity to to speak with you um very grateful for that. And I hope that everybody takes some action in participating in our platform. I'd love to make it happen for, for anybody listening. And um, thanks again. Yeah, I think it's an, a nice thing that you're doing, Michael. Um, and of course, it's born out of a pivot that you needed to do f- because of COVID. Um, but some of our best ideas come under duress, right? In survival mode. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I, I congratulate you. And, um, to think that you were the original brainchild of BDNY, which I've been to many times and has become such, you know, had become at least before COVID such a big thing is pretty, pretty crazy. So, um, congratulations. You're a pretty remarkable man there. Uh, Thank you, Luann. All right. So thanks for joining me today, Michael. I appreciate it. And maybe one day we'll see each other on one of these trips. Looking forward to that.
What do you think? Are you inclined to go to South Carolina in October and meet all those suppliers? <laughs> this sounds like fun, right? And if that's not in the stars for you, I also love how Michael has brought the speed dating concept to us with the launch of nextvirtualmeetings.com. Michael is a natural born entrepreneur because it didn't take him long to figure out where the next opportunity was and how to make his move. He went from hosting an in-person destination event to a virtual connection platform within a a few short months. And that's a big deal and a lot of work. I commend Michael for keeping a level head, staying positive, and finding a solution in the midst of what must have been an absolutely insane time for him. And the thing is, he was able to do it because he knows his niche. He's a connector in the industry and in our world. And he didn't give that up. He just reinvented how he does it right? So if you want to connect with a supplier or to see what's new and what's now, just go to nextvirtualmeetings.com and apply to participate in one or a series of the virtual supplier meetings. I love that you can go behind the scenes and see some of the suppliers and what their process is. And it's a bonus that you get that full picture of the product line and what the company is all about. And I have to say to any suppliers or brands listening, I think this could be a valuable way for you to build trust with the designers that are listening to the show as well. You'll get to show them all the details and the features of your products. You don't even have to take notes because they'll send you the transcript and the Zoom recording. Love that feature, right? So if you think Michael's virtual connection platform could be a smart way of streamlining your product research and sourcing, check out their application at next virtual meetings.com. And don't forget to visit all aboard design.co to find out more about the South Carolina work play event coming up in October. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. I totally appreciate that you take your time and you spend it with me. And I just always want to make sure that you remember to decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.